Good afternoon, my name's Toby. And I'm John. This is the BBC School News Report from Tommy Drell's Crown School for Boys. Today's top stories are... Bomb and ceasefire in Jerusalem. And a bomb threat in Paris caused a major evacuation of the famous tourist attraction. The budget. Cut to the art and how schools can fight back. And an update on the Japanese tsunami and whether one could actually happen here in the UK. Britain's Olympic dreams. Suki Branson visits TWGSB. In Jerusalem yesterday, a 60-year-old British woman was killed outside the city's main bus station. This was the first bombing there for seven years. Could this be the start of further troubles? And has the ceasefire been officially broken? And closer to home, at 3pm yesterday, around 4,000 people were evacuated from the Eiffel Tower. Police had received an anonymous warning of a suspicious package. This is turning to a regular occurrence at this famous French tourist attraction. The budget was announced yesterday. Does the budget affect you? Being a student, you might not think it does. But the Chancellor promised 40,000 apprenticeships yesterday and 10,000 advanced ones. He also promised a further 250,000 apprenticeships by 2015. Is this a good thing for young people who want jobs? He also gave the gaming industry an extra £7 million. This has proved controversial with the British public. Do you think it's a good idea? In a recession, it is clear that some cuts need to be made. But has the coalition government made the right decisions? Let's go over to Charlie and Joe, our national news correspondents. Have you noticed the increase in cuts? Have you been affected by them? Well, now many people will. This is due to the latest cuts organised by our government to help our economy. These cuts include bus passes, general education cuts and many public sector cuts. All these cuts will affect students who get, receive a free bus pass. They will end up having to pay for their bus pass, which could cost up to £800 a year. And now we'll go and see what Mr Harrison, head of TWGSB, thinks of the education cuts. The proposed cuts and uh, new system as far as school transport will most certainly have an impact on the school and the students in the school. Um, the most recent proposal, which is currently out for consultation, is suggesting that the Chem Freedom Pass will be increased in cost from £50 to £100. Pounds. Although I think that probably for most people still represents very good value for money. My biggest concern is the proposal that from here on in, children who are assessed as suitable for a grammar school won't be provided with free transport to their school. Now to Joe to see how the cuts have affected students around TWGS boys. Well, I don't really think it's fair because just because we're in a grammar school it doesn't mean we have more or less rights than anyone else to have a bus pass. And just as many people get my bus than in a comprehensive school. Well, the, so, so do you think the cuts to bus pass will affect you? Yeah, because a few years ago I used to use the Freedom Pass and I think without the Freedom Pass it would be quite expensive. It's not fair on younger students if they're not Hi, I'm Joe, reporting for the BBC School News Report on the budget cuts in this local area and especially how they affect students and, and their travelling to school. Do you think they will affect schools and education a lot in the local area? Uh, I can't see how they can't, really. And it's very concerning because obviously we've got the grammar system in Tom Rails, so that is a concern. It shouldn't affect secondary education too much because there's a lot of uh, PTAs who will put in the money to cover the losses. So far the cuts total 74 million and another 21 million hopes to be raised by further cuts. Have you noticed any of the cuts affecting the library? Well they haven't at the moment but obviously we start a new budget here after we come back after Easter and I suspect then that we will have cuts to departmental budgets and the library will suffer as it has you know across the school. Lots of cuts will be made, they have to be. That's all for me now, back to the studio. Thanks for the insight into that budget cut. Despite these cuts though, and the school budgets being so tight, TWGSB managed to set up Oscars evening, celebrating A-level students' achievements. We sent Jack to take a look. Hi, I'm Jack, reporting for BBC School Report on the stage of Tunbridge Wells Grammar School for Boys. Cuts in the arts, what do they mean to us? Well, with the little money we have already, we already produce amazing events such as the recent Oscars evening. We all know that education is affected by budget cuts, another area that has a significant impact, of which includes a 40% decrease to the funding of the arts. However, despite all this negative impact on education and culture, schools can be really initiative in finding ways to celebrate the arts 
and encourage students to be creative. The Oscars Night is a ceremony organised by students and teachers, a collaboration across the school, with displays from the art department and the media department. The event celebrates the A-level work of media studies year 13 students. I'm Jack, reporting for BBC School Report. Now, back to the studio. It's been two weeks since the Japanese tsunami. The death toll rising every day. Could a tsunami affect our coastlines? Can wait to find out. It's been two weeks since Japan was hit by a devastating earthquake. The death toll has now risen to a confirmed 9,500. The main concern is the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Japan impressed the world community by being prepared for earthquakes, so why has it caused so much devastation? And if they were ready for it, what would happen if the disaster struck here, in the UK? How likely is it that a huge earthquake and or a tsunami could strike here? It sounds impossible. However, is that actually the case? We went to Tunbridge Wells to ask the public if there was a chance of a tsunami in the UK. Um, do you think a, a tsunami and earthquake, like they've had in Japan, do you think it could happen in the southeast of England? Um, possible, if the tectonic plate shifts around, then yeah. Well, actually, it is more likely than you may think. We've been speaking to Miss Edwards to find out more. Um, do you think it is possible to have a tsunami and earthquake like in Japan in Britain? Um, well, to be on the safe side, probably no. We wouldn't have uh, such a large disaster in Britain because we don't. We're not on a plate boundary, and Japan's on a destructive plate boundary, which means that they have really, really strong earthquakes, and they're very, very prone to having uh, these kind of disasters. As Ms. Edwards said, there is not likely to be a tsunami caused by an earthquake here, as we do not get strong earthquakes in the UK. However, we could get a tsunami caused by global warming. The ice melting in Greenland could cause landslides in the sea, causing a tsunami wave. So it does seem likely the tsunami could be caused by a number of things. But are we prepared for it? And would we be able to cope with it? And how do you think they would cope in Britain? if a disaster like that struck here? Uh, would be uh, really, I think the people will cope anyway, but it uh, would be a really difficult situation. As, um, there is no history of earthquakes in this country and these structures are not made for earthquakes neither. So um, it would be very complicated. I think uh, with an earthquake with that magnitude, over seven in Richter scale will be devastating. Now we can see we are not completely safe from disasters, but you may want to think, what would you do if an earthquake or a tsunami struck? And also, should we be concerned about our numerous nuclear power plants along the southeast coast? Back to the studio. The 2012 Olympic tickets are currently on sale, and the final date to apply is the 26th of March 2011. I've bought tickets with you. James went to find out. As you may already know, London 2012 is happening next year, and as our country is coming out of a recession, we ask the question, is the Olympics worth the investment? Are you looking forward to London 2012 next year? Um, yes, I guess I am. Yeah. Have you got, are you going to buy any tickets for it? Um, yeah, we haven't applied for the tickets yet, but we're definitely going to. Um, probably not. <laughs> it's just not such a big deal for me, to be honest. Um, I think it'd probably be... More fun watching it on telly. With London 2012 costing a minimum of 10 to 20 billion pounds, could the money be spent better? Difficult to say. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. I've lived here for over 10 years, but I did have the opportunity to go to Vancouver Winter Olympics uh, last year. Um, a lot of money was spent and not a lot of money was generated. We have interviewed two Olympic athletes, one ex Olympic swimmer, Suki Brownson, and another one, Paul Cameron, who is an upcoming athletic star. What do you think about the 2012 Olympics for young people? I think it's a great inspiration. Even in my club, I can see lots of people joining the club just to get a piece of the action. So they have, so they have the understanding of the actual sports when it comes to it. So it's just, um, I guess, the national pride of it all. I'm here with Suki Brownson, who is a Commonwealth gold medalist. Suki, do you, what are your achievements in the Olympics? Okay, I was actually a swimmer. Um, and I swam at four Olympic Games. How important do you think the Olympics are? Very important. I think they're good for, uh, for people to watch and get inspired. And I think that's really what's going to 
um, hopefully change a lot of people's attitudes in you know, young, the young people in Great Britain. But I do know as a young swimmer myself, and that, that I, you know, I didn't have any money, didn't have any sponsorship, and it was very, very difficult, but I think the overlying fact was I wanted to swim, I wanted to go to the Olympics, and I was going to go come what may. What do you think the future of the Olympics will be? I'm hoping that it will just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I'm just hoping that more and more people want to or want to take part in the Olympic Games, whether it's the Paralympics, the Winter Olympics or the Youth Olympic Games. We have also interviewed Enrico, a student at TWGSB, who is twice national champion at judo in the under-15 age band and under-66 kilogram weight category. Another potential Olympian. Hello Enrico, how are you? Hi James, I'm good thanks. Well, as we can see you're in your suit, what do you actually compete in? I do judo, which is a Japanese martial art. Ah, what, where do you compete? Uh, well, I train at Tomo Shiro Cup, just off small made way. And yeah, it's really good there. Do you know anyone who's more uh, Olympic hopeful? Yeah, my friend Ashley McKenzie is training at our judo club, and uh, hopefully he'll be at 2012. Awesome. Do you, are you hoping to be in any Olympics in the future? Maybe, if I train really hard, possibly 2020. Okay, thank you, Enrico. It is clear that past Olympians think that it is important to spend money on sport. This is James for BBC Score Report, back to the studio. And now an update to the Royal Wedding. It's been announced that the Royal Couple will be recording their vows to be sold on iTunes for 79p. It will go on sale just minutes after they make them and a percentage of the money made will go to a charity. The charity chosen is the Prince's Trust. Is this a sign that they are trying to attract a younger audience? And finally, an unusual find in Siberia has made us ask the question, is the legend of the Yeti more than just fiction? A well-preserved furry limb of an unknown animal was found by a climber in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. Locals say the animal must have walked on snow because the fur located on the sole of the fur. Scientists predict the bones to be thousands of years old, but are possibly related to human bones. Is the Yeti another branch of human evolution? Russian scientists seem to think so. And are working together to study the supposed Yeti further. Thank you, and goodbye. From me, Toby. And me, John.